Verdict is as follows. In the Superior Court of Glenn County, State of Georgia, the State of Georgia versus Travis McMichael, case number CR000433. Jury verdict form. Count one, malice murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Travis McMichael, guilty. Oh. I'm going to ask that whoever just made an outburst be removed from the court, please. Pregnant pause. Yep. I don't see how you can never expect uh, the audience. Why would you have a room full of people? Really? Really? Somebody's going to make some sort of outburst. As this court has indicated, I ask that there be no outbursts in the court, and I expect as much from the gallery. Please respect the court's um, desire for this as we move forward. If you feel like you need to make a comment, or otherwise demonstrate with respect Go to the outside. Verdict, I do ask that you step out of the courtroom now. Count two, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Travis McMichael, guilty. Count three, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Travis McMichael, guilty. Count four, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Travis McMichael, guilty. Count five, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Travis McMichael, guilty. Count six, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Travis McMichael, guilty. Count seven, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Travis McMichael, guilty. Count eight, false imprisonment. We, the jury, find the defendant, Travis McMichael, guilty. Count nine, criminal attempt to commit a felony. We, the jury, find the defendant, Travis McMichael, Guilty. Dated this 24th day of November, 2021, signed by the four person. I know what Ray thinks about it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. The rest of your that's life the Gregory McMichael. Now, that's the guy that had the gun. Right. This is the father that was driving the truck. In the Superior Court of Glenn County, the state of Georgia uh -huh. versus Greg McMichael. Says, right. Case number CR0, I'm sorry, 2000433. Jury verdict form. Count one, malice murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Greg McMichael, not guilty. Count two, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Greg McMichael, guilty. Count three, you know the difference? felony murder. I'll explain it to we you. We, the jury, yeah. find the defendant, Greg McMichael, guilty. Count four, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Greg McMichael, guilty. Count five, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Greg McMichael, guilty. There was only one count victim, six, right? Yep. Aggravated assault. How many counts of felony we murder the jury can there find be? the defendant, Greg McMichael, guilty. Killing eight times? I, I was confused with that, too. Count seven, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Greg McMichael, guilty. Count eight, false imprisonment. We, the jury, find the defendant, Greg McMichael, guilty. Count nine, criminal attempt to commit a felony. We, the jury, find the defendant, Greg McMichael, guilty. This 24th day of November, 2021, signed by the person. All right. Mm. So next is the guy who turned over the cell phone video to Marbury. show that his two neighbors weren't attacking an innocent person and watch In what happens to him. In the Superior Court of Glenn County, state of Georgia. State of Georgia versus William R. Bryan. He was 100 Case feet away. CR two zero zero zero. He was there running, buddy. Jury verdict form. Count one. Malice murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, William R. Bryan, not guilty. Count two, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, William R. Bryan, not guilty. Count three, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, William R. Bryan, guilty. Count four. The state of Georgia murder. is going to we, kill him for what he did. Think about that, Paul. Guilty. No. Okay, Count felony five. murder. It's a capital felony crime. Murder. He won't be. We executed. the jury find the really? defendant William R. Bryan. Well, shit, killed. he should be. He was convicted Count of capital mur of felony murder. Assault. Life we the jury murder. find the defendant William R. Bryan not guilty. Count seven, aggravated assault. 
we the jury find the defendant William R. Bryan guilty. Count eight, false imprisonment. We the jury find the defendant William R. Bryan guilty. Count nine, criminal attempt to commit a felony. We the jury find the defendant William R. Bryan guilty. Signed this 24th day of November by the four person. And I can't find a seconder usually when I propose this, but I don't care. I don't need a seconder. My own opinion is enough for me, and I claim the right to have it defended against any consensus, any majority, anywhere, any place, any time. And anyone who disagrees with this can pick a number, get in line, kiss my ass. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed are greater than the legal services provided by other lawyers. I'm Harry Still. You found the Backstory Podcast, number 109. I have my partner in crime and client, Mr. Paul Rip, in studio with us today. How are you, Mr. Rip? Glad to be here representing the Rip Report and the Court of Public Opinion. So, you want to get right into this thing? Not really. Well, three. Okay, so so read the headline. This is important. Yeah, three white. The, men. the race part is what's important. Three white men are found guilty of murder in the killing of Ahmad Arbery. Right. Right. Do you know the name of any three of these guys? You just heard it. Do you remember what they are? Don't look at it, asshole. What? What's their names? These three got these three men well, I know who one just is got Travis convicted. And one's Greg. No, you don't. You don't know who they are. All you know is Ahmad Arbery. So, and and they he's got murals. Uh, this is deliberations entering second day. Um, there's marches. I watched a big special on him on ABC last night. I mean, I hate that I didn't live up there so I could be friends with him the way that uh, they presented him on ABC News. Well, I'm not going to argue with the jury. Okay. Well, well, let, let's talk about I this. Do, I don't understand the. Uh, well, let's go through the. Let's go through the checklist. What well, what you saw was okay. So. It, so uh, the guy that pulled the trigger, uh, he was convicted on all counts. Right. The other two were convicted on felony murder counts. And just I'm going to give you a similar scheme to think of as if the guy with the camera, the one that was right. 100 feet away, right? he was the getaway driver for the bank robbery, right? Right, right. And right. the son shot the guard and the father was the getaway driver, and this other guy was a lookout or whatever. Right, so in that right. instance, everyone would be convicted of felony murder of the death of the bank guard. Right. So that's the scenario that you have to convince the jury of to convict, convict these men. You, you hear how they said false imprisonment, These all these other felonies they committed against him? Right. Okay, so here's the other side of the coin. The criminal code, Title 17 in Georgia says arrest by private persons, grounds for arrest. A private person may arrest an offender if the offense is committed in his presence or within his immediate knowledge. Check. If the offense is a felony, check. And the offender is escaping or attempting to escape, check. A private person may arrest him upon reasonable grounds and probable grounds of suspicion. So what you say is them running some poor guy down and shooting him is what I what I'm saying is is when What's if, the if you're jogging it he was it, he was trespassing and and there had been multiple things stolen from the, I don't know twenty five hundred dollars worth of a something a boat or something stolen out of the house or whatever they're they're like a neighborhood watch group yes but it's saying and okay well, Paul let me, let in me, his presence and wait a minute and neighborhood or watch, within his immediate knowledge and neighborhood watch the key word is watch. Not supposed to engage. With okay, weapons. you don't understand. They are they are authorized by law to do exactly what they did. Now this is and they did a piss poor job. This has been appealed. This since. has been repealed. The state of Georgia repealed this part of the code, right. and they said this is you're no longer authorized to to apprehend someone. And of course, all the people in New York City are saying it's Jim. It was it was gave people a right to lynch and all this, and we got to. No, it gave a private citizen a right to hold you until the until the proper authorities got there, which is what they intended to do until this young man grabbed the work, the other end of the shotgun. Now, when he did that, in my mind, I'm thinking if he gets this thing away from him, he's going to shoot all of us. 
But they shouldn't have showed up with weapons, for Christ's sake. Okay, well, well, what's he how, stealing? How, how He's jogging you... down the damn road. He had got sheetrock on his back. I don't know. I, I mean, wasn't there. He's not carrying a hammer and tools. But all I can tell you is um, it was all about the victim in this case, and it had nothing to do with uh, they, they completely ignored the statute. And you can go through stand your ground and all that kind of stuff. So, contrarily, who's this guy? You know him. He's do a, you know the Do you know the name of the of any of his victims? He's probably the luckiest person in the world. No, no, no. Answer is. my question, Paul. Do you know the name of any of his victims? No, no, you don't. That's right. You know Kyle Rittenhouse. You know why? I don't either. Because he was a shooter. Okay, well, how, this other guy was a shooter. You don't know who he is. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is how the media played this thing. Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to give this kid a congressional gold medal. Well, that should tell you a hell of a lot. <laughs> well, that I, should tell what I'm you saying, this lot, whole brother. thing was politicized. Marjorie Both Taylor of the Green. trials. They were sensationalized. And that I, got out that I will agree with. Yes. That I will agree with. So back home to Alabama standing in the schoolhouse door so trump seeks to oust republican alabama governor over canceling his event at the uss alabama which is not allowed by the battleship commission yeah, whatever it is it seems like it's a trust a board of trustees right they don't allow political activity on the premises thank god thank god i mean well i mean really it should they shouldn't i i, I applaud that Oh, my goodness. Okay, oh, yeah, so right. instead of going after white-collar criminals oh, and doing like anything else Tom worth the shit. Tom Albritton, head of the Ethics Commission, instead of doing that, let's go after her. And, and let me defend my Renaming position on street. this. Steve, you're an embarrassment to my profession. I'm telling you, So man. they renamed Jefferson Davis Avenue in Montgomery, which, who cares? So what? Um, and I guess the AG's tr- threatening to sue them over that uh, monuments, like naming a street is equivalent to, you know, you can't take down a monument that's more than 75 years old. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's the, the you know, by rook or crook, he'll figure out some way not to enforce the law on certain individuals. And then on the flip side, he's grasping at straws to get his name in the newspaper. I think he in He is a total... Uh, Waste of carbon and water. Uh, to put it a lot nicely. in common with uh, Representative uh, Elliot, the tax man. Peas in the pod. So right. while all while he's worried about shit like what roads are named, right? The city of Mobile is uh, on track to have potentially its most deadly year of homicides in 20 years just watch the news it's horrifying i love to watch the news at 5 30 national news and there's a hundred and twenty five people out on bond right now for murder in mobile that should scare you five out on bond but the ag's worried about what a street's named and gonna find the city of montgomery 25 grand yeah Spanish Fort Police trying to solve a brazen burglary caught on camera overnight at the Best Buy store there. Yeah, investigators say these guys sawed their way through the roof using a ladder to then climb down inside the so store. Wow. Fox 10 News investigative reporter Brendan Kirby now joining us live with more on the heist and the video. And Brendan, this took some planning. Oh, yeah, it sure did, Byron and Lenise. This was no impulsive theft. Police say that these burglars were well organized and came prepared with saws, power tools, and other tools. Spanish Fort Police say the burglary took place between 1 and 3 in the morning. Surveillance video shows at least two people, dressed all in black and faces covered, climbing into the store and carrying off a large amount of computer and electronics equipment. Police Chief John Barber says the crooks targeted Apple products. And these are kind of the Grinches that stole Christmas, and we plan on getting them. The Grinches. Chief Barber Grinch. says this reminds him of a professional ring of thieves that hit Best Buys across the southeast a few years ago. He was with the Mobile Police Department at the time and says criminals hit the store there and in Spanish Look at Fort. the ladder. Look at the ladder. Best Buy CEO Corey Barry said on a conference call with analysts just yeah. this week that theft was becoming a bigger problem, so much so that it was. Okay, so so let's talk about this for a second. 
So the ladder, the, that, that's one of those ladders. How'd they end up on the ladder? Well, no, you know? somebody prepositioned that ladder is sure what I'm trying like to say. It. Sure look like and it. And here, here's the other thing that's funny. Uh, you do realize that the the police station is in the same mall as the Best Buy. <laughs> oh, my God. You, you no, realize I that, did, right? No, I did not. Yeah, so, right, not. so you know where the movie theater is? Yeah. Yeah, it's right next to the movie theater. You know where the... Uh, What's it called? The uh, the Naval and Army Recruiter Station? Yeah. Right. Yeah, behind that is a police substation. There's always like 40 cop cars there. So, yeah, well, happened, sawing through happened the, right under their nose. Sawing through the roof to. had to make a hell of a lot of noise, I would think. Well, let me tell you what. If you get caught, don't get caught here. Right. <laughs> Absolutely not. Because there's a sign show. in the window that reads, Help. Yeah, right. Holman Correction Facility, the uh, where the inmates are literally in charge of the insane asylum. Um, there's the New Justice Department complaint says Alabama has not improved prison conditions since 2019. And you remember the governors agreed to spend 400 million dollars of COVID money that should have gone in your pocket, right? Um, to to try to fix this prison system, but they're saying it's no better. And so then there was a 14-year-old that had had enough of that shit, and he stole a cop car and led the lawmen across the state of Alabama on a chase. Anyway. He was out of there. Yep. That reminds me of a young range Russian story. delinquent offenses. Uh-huh. Okay. So some environmental news, and that's just a picture I took the other day. Shows you how beautiful Bowen County is. I was out looking at That's the Byrne family uh grave plot back there in the back over there uh-huh it is gorgeous and um of course this is uh so that place is right over here somewhere just to the east of gravine island mm-hmm. and then uh my hunting camp is not quite on this map it's right up here um so this is uh what we we we've come to know as a mobile tensar river delta and um look at that mud plume go back and show that oh yeah well see that's what it looks like from the space shuttle because of all the sedimentation and bull crap right. runoff that's that, going on that's what's screwing up the oysters so i saw ben shuttle. rains on the television this morning and um it right, anyway i thought i would bring up some of the things that that he uh we were going to talk about anyway America's and that's amazon. Uh, america's amazon the mobile tensor river delta and uh, just the biodiversity here, the fact that we have uh, the most, uh, I think we have the most species of oaks anywhere in the country. That was one of the things he talked about this morning. And then uh, like uh, two-thirds of all the fish species uh, in North America are found in Alabama. If you hadn't seen America's Amazon, I highly recommend it. And there's there's my little murder cabin where I like to take people and skin them alive. Yeah, if you right. read the... Uh, what is it, the Master Name Index. I'm sure they have that flag, <laughs> that position flag there. Um, but this is the uh, endangered Alabama darter. Everybody's heard of the snail darter. Right. Uh, game's permanent habitat protection. Um, Pretty fish. And these these are the folks from the Freshwater Land Trust, um, the Seven Springs Properties Conservation Easement from the Watercrest darter. And Where is Seven Springs? Um, I would think that this is up around the Cahaba. They've, they've got, uh, so did you know that the, the Cahaba river, which is one of the most biodiverse 12 miles of water in the world ran dry in 2016 because of a drought and the only water running in the Cahaba river would, was sewage effluent. There's really? a, do you remember a few podcasts ago I showed you an infographic and it said that there's no prohibition for how much water agriculture and industry can take out of a stream? Right. Okay, well, that's the impact that you lose. I mean, you know, all of these wonderful fish, the only water they have to swim is is sewage effluent. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, that, that should make you want to puke. Make sure and the Gulf of Mexico too. oil reserve auctions, <laughs> and you know that happened. You're right, that, that, it's a done deal. Uh, an area south of Alabama, twice the size of Florida, uh, and all of the exploration is going to happen at depths deeper than Deepwater Horizon. 
But shit, don't worry. Halliburton's in charge. It's going to be fine. I don't think they should allow any damn rigs in the ocean. Well, we got to have rigs in the ocean, but they don't need to be within eye shot of Dolphin Island. Well, that's or true. Or Fort Morgan. True. They've and, ruined Dolphin Island's view. Oh, it's terrible. And so if you want to bitch at somebody about it, there's your new legislators. Right. That'll get all their you a new, long All way. their new districts. Try to figure out that bullshit right there. <laughs> looks, right. You're gonna, looks like, you're looks like a, a rock map. hit a hit a windshield right. that's how they came up with the districts and uh, Not, what uh-huh. <laughs> no so what, here's really? the new what for the week yeah a One new covid19 variant could show that shows immune evasion and enhanced transmissibility and so what they're saying is even if you've had it before and even if you've had a vaccine there are going to be a lot more breakthroughs with this omicron variant and um Anyway, South Africa, they've seen 2,600 new cases in a week. And a lot of those assholes got on planes, of course, and flew to Hong Kong, uh, Belgium. I'm trying to think of all the places I read about. But anyway, um, it's going to be bad. And if there's not a huge spike after everybody flying all over the damn world for Thanksgiving, uh, this this little this this little new variant could be the Grinch that stole Christmas. And the largest number of people ever to fly in quite some time. And just so you can keep up, I gave you a Greek alphabet. So when we're talking, see, this one's Omicron. <laughs> Pi next. Pi will be next. 48.1 million infected with SARS-CoV-2 in the United States with 776,353 deaths. Three quarters of a million people. And no one has resigned, but thank God Pfizer's come out with a new pill. Oh, and we're all supposed so if your ear's not ringing yet, just wait. You have a third <laughs> chance for your ears to ring because we're all supposed to go get a booster. Well, my ears have been ringing since I left Vietnam. I just got used to it now. And be careful when you kill a deer. It's hunting season. Mm-hmm. So hot spots by county last week. Check this out. Getting worse. It's yep. getting hotter again. And uh, total deaths in the last 14 days is three. Total cases, 38,042. Total deaths. In Baldwin County, 589. So how many of those do you reckon Mac Funeral Home took care of? Well, good morning. Uh, This is Sheriff Mac with the Baldwin County Sheriff's Office. Coming to you as we start the beginning of this week to give you a little update uh, from the Sheriff's Office and what all we have going on. Uh, In consultation with my deputy sheriffs and uh, other law enforcement, uh, I have also added that while we will continue to notify businesses Uh, if they are in violation of the governor's order, we'll notify them that the governor's order is still in place because there are other institutions out there that are a part of this. There's the health department and there are many regulatory agencies outside of the sheriff's office that uh, have a say in the enforcement of that rule. But the sheriff's office will not take any law enforcement action on those businesses or on those religious institutions that are wanting to meet and wanting to get back to business. To deny an order is just to deny it. I don't know. That's a lot of people for the county, though. 589. Wow. Wow. Speaking of dead ducks, yeah. Mo Brooks, <laughs> Katie Britt news, um, besides getting $5 million and being up two points, she was down here this week at the Alabama District Attorneys Association in Baldwin County. Does that look like the Grand Hotel to you? Oh, that would be a friendly group. No, that's probably down at the beach, I bet. That does look like the beach. Yeah. Yeah. That five-star restaurant, they I mean, hotel they built. That <laughs> you look at the back of it in the garbage cans as you drive up. It's called minimalistic. Yeah. And it's like yeah, LEED okay. certified. And, and uh, so they said well, they don't use any water for the landscaping. And I'm like, no shit. It looks <laughs> no, no, like I, had absolutely. I could believe that. So then uh, <laughs> Katie Britt, uh, <laughs> the, the Federal Elections Commission is allowing comp- political campaigns to accept Bitcoin. Yeah. And Katie Britt is now accepting cryptocurrency. So she is on the move with that, the young people. That's a first. And, uh, and old dipshit. I, I hate to call a man who who is a member of the bar and who went to Harvard a dipshit, but Mo Brooks is the epitome of one. 
and all of his press is national. Yeah. Well, people in other states don't vote for you, dude. Katie Britt's out here beating the bricks to death. I mean, yeah. every time I turn around, she's somewhere else. Cryptocurrency, that's pretty cool. I can't believe she jumped in. Yeah, that. I can't believe anybody has any, but that's right. another story. Okay, Paul, it's time for the RIP Report. All right, RIP Report. The RIP Report dot com. You can go to it on Facebook. Uh, it's a dot com site. We also, of course, got Backstory Podcast and Baldwin County Legal Legal. This week we wrote on um, actually an article that was in last week's Lanyap. This is kind of a Lanyap uh, boost, too. And that was passing the buck. Make sure he sees the whole Christmas bar libel for lawsuit. You know, this is where he had no. Um, no apology for anything that he's done. Those of you that might have been following this, it's been going on now for like uh, three years. Uh, started out probably uh, an apology. If he had apologized to this girl for what he had done, I'll bet it wouldn't have gone anywhere. But now it has gotten so convoluted. It's involved uh, judges and attorneys and Everybody's scratching their head saying, what the hell is going on here? How come this guy is being so protected? Anyway, he's complaining and bitching now that uh, he spent uh, too much money on attorneys, uh, which we recommend that uh, he stop, you know, filing lawsuits against people that and not got in, him and, drunk. And uh, beating up women and, <clears throat> and uh, geriatric homosexuals, you know, come – Come get a piece of me or Rain's Russian sometime when you get a load on. Yeah. And see how it goes for you. But anyway, anyway, it's a sad case. He's all the time saying there was a early settlement, which is BS, and that there was an argument that uh, was going on when he knocked her off the bar stool, which. You know, there's a word for Ronan McSherry, make? and it's coward. Yeah. He's a right. coward. He beats right. up little old men and women. And for the court of public opinion, we're suggesting that you do not uh, patronize his establishment. Okay, so let me let me give you another idea, Paul. All right. So McSherry is an invitee, correct, at right. the Little Whiskey Christmas Club? Correct. And then when when he does something overtly violent, he sues the Little Whiskey Christmas Club, right? Right. So why would anybody why I would put up a sign that says we reserve the right to refuse service to anyone, especially Ronan McSherry. Uh, if I was a bar owner in Fairhope, that sign would go up on my wall immediately. Well he's not because welcome. if he comes to your place and beats the shit out of somebody, right. it's gonna be your fault. So why right. have him in your bar? Then he's gonna use your camera and say, Oh, well this all happened because you got me drunk. Don't let him in, people. Anyway, I mean, think of uh, think of the expense the state has gone to in the city over this over case. over this yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, he's the one that shouldn't be having and, a license. And talk about somebody that's been inconvenienced and spent a whole lot of money. Why drag me into this? Why drag you into it? Subpoena and us or land for yet. what? Or land talking yet. about public officials not doing their damn jobs. <laughs> I, I can't imagine why anybody would say that we didn't have a right to do that. That's what's wrong here. That's a lot what's of people wrong. don't think they do have that right. Anyway, Ooh. anyway, getting back, <laughs> calm down now there. Uh, anyway, let's get back to Lanyap. Uh, they have a it's a damn chicory in that coffee. They have me a pissed flyer, off. Yeah, <laughs> they have a uh, little magazine in there. I don't know that they've done this before. Wish Book Twenty Twenty One. Uh, composed of different advertisers and everything uh, coming up to Christmas. You might want to look at that. And uh, also um, Rob Holbert's article, we hope Rob's getting better too. Damn the torpedoes, giving a little thanks for being here. And uh, Rob says it's a little bit easier to be thankful this year, not that I've ever taken for granted the wonderful people and dogs in my life and the pleasure of getting to make a living doing what I love. But sometime, something about a near-death experience crystallizes things for you. Suddenly you're thankful for the most mundane things. I can certainly relate to that, I can tell you. Uh, our best, uh, Rob. Um, another little blip in um, Lanyap is $5 million price tags for the football stadiums for Viger and LaFleur. 
and I don't begrudge them their um, football fields, but I tell you what, I'd be a little reluctant as a, pro- of a parent if you started sending me notes to send money and donations for every other thing from paper to pens and whatnot, if you got five million bucks. Please send your child to, to school with crayons, a ream of paper for the teacher, toilet right. paper, a roll of toilet, a uh, roll of paper towels. Yeah, and then you got the teachers uh, feeling sorry that they want the supplies, so then the teachers go out of the way and supply. What the world is going on here? The teachers shouldn't have to do that at all. Um, Lanyap also, you know, has, uh, sports music venues, a lot of information about, uh, a lot of information about, uh, mobile. It's a mobile based paper. Uh, those of you in Baldwin County, uh, remember we got two different districts coming up. District eight zoning. That's the one pinned between point clear RSA and Fairhope and that proposed new district it would be extremely wise for them to be zoned because if they're not, they're going to be gobbled up by three different entities and be more chopped up in there than ever and not have a voice on anything they got to say. So those of you living in those districts, uh, I suggest that you vote for zoning. Um, another article is Home Rule. It's by Gabe Times. Uh, Bowen County Commissioner's hands are tied about redrawing the district lines. and this is about how disproportionate the uh, county is as far as population, which is certainly not their fault, but um, it does seem unfair, and they're not allowed to redistrict it. So, well, what if do you, you do? go if you go with the one man one vote idea, you know, if everybody in that district only got to only got to vote for their one person, then you'd have. 19,000 people with a whole lot more power. But here, the people run at large. The votes are at large. They right. run in districts. But if you're a citizen here, you can vote for each of the, each of the seats, all four, all four county commissioners. So anyway, um, most importantly, the most important thing to take from this is they can't redraw their own lines. The legislature will have to do it. And look at the CF that it was with them re- redistricting the Senate and House districts. Yeah. Now, you want to put these A clowns in charge? I could just imagine what they're going to do to Baldwin County. Uh, another article you might find uh, interesting by Lynn Olshue, Real Life Miracles, uh, uh, the Ransom Ministries, anyone or anything could be saved and used in different ways story about a gentleman that went from the bottom back up to where he's coming out of that hole. A lot of people get uh, uh, many different things, alcoholism, depression, homelessness, uh, and it can be uh, pretty hard to crawl back from that. But this is a story of one man that did. Pretty good article. And Especially then, if you get the law on your neck. Yeah, yeah really. Right, this is about land disturbances and uh, people taking advantage of uh, dumping um, um, any type of debris into creeks, rivers, wetlands, stuff like that, not going by the rules. And uh, land disturbance activities uh, in these areas. Now, one thing that they said that they had, Harry, I thought was interesting was uh, the disturbance requ- requirements of the Baldwin County Zoning Ordinance are within areas displayed on the new hydric potential map. Yeah, well, what it is... We um, should get that. Well, so it so you've seen a 7.5-minute U.S. topo map before. Right. I'm sure you've navigated by them before. And, you know, you see the little areas that has the cattails on it? Mm-hmm. So that's suspected wetlands based on elevation, right? It's not certified wetland. And what they're saying is they've delineated it, and if any part of your property, if you're going to do some development, you have to get a permit and you have to do what's called best management practices, which if you've been by up and down 181, you're seeing a lot of hay bales out, a lot of that uh, wire mesh with silt fence behind it. Right. Those are the types of things you should do. If you look at this picture right here, this is exactly what they're talking about, pushing mud out into the water. And that's what we want to avoid. And uh, I've even seen where they've had to put 
So you know what you call a silt fence in the water? Right. I'm going to give you I've a new. Seen that. It's called a turbidity inhibitor. <laughs> turbidity inhibitor. Turbidity inhibitor. Uh, so, I, so. But a huge part part of Baldwin County is included in this. So if you're going to be doing anything, even if it's, a, if it's on your own property, you need to go check with them and see if you need a land disturbance permit, especially if you get out there with a piece of heavy equipment and start pushing dirt. Or you will need a turbidity. Turbidity inhibitor. <laughs> Installer. Installer, <laughs> right. Uh, the other thing, those of you that go back a little ways, if you remember the penny tax revenue, you know, the one that they put in that we all were, it wasn't going to be there, but just for a little while they were going to, you know, get rid of it. Well, the penny tax revenues have jumped $10 million for Baldwin County Schools. This is by Scott Johnson. This, this, this brings you up again like... That's how they can afford to pay John Gray so much money to be their political consultant. Right. Well, Mr. Gray's got several really uh Yeah, we'll get, him. We'll get him at the end of the podcast. Yeah. Well, that or we'll but do he, just but, a but if you can imagine that the Baldwin County Commission has a paid political consultant right. or lobbyist. Which it makes a tremendous amount of money. Oh, let's not get into that. Oh, or yeah. All right. The article that would interest me the most in Lanyap this week is the what I call interstate larceny. The ward of the state plaintiff claims probate court complicated control of his father's estate. This is by Gabe Times. This is a really um, ex- excellent article in two ways. One it's got a lot of complicated issues in it, a lot of individuals, and it's trying to tell a uh, narrative, you know, with a limited amount of time. And I think that Gabe did an excellent job on that, really. Uh, and this is... Uh, I guess he didn't have room to put in there that I was the plaintiff's attorney that brought all this out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't also mention that, uh, you know, I had talked to Mr. Peters, the uh, person this is about mr peters when um uh he called me saying that he was having this problem in courts and couldn't get anybody to help him or whatnot so harry i recommended harry and harry took it from there to as far as he could probably go uh he was um, and if you want to read a wonderful piece of legal writing go read the motion to reconsider that i filed in response to the judge's inexplicable reversal in this case right well after a hearing in june 2021 presiding circuit court judge clark stankowski determined the probate order related to the removal of ryan peters as conservator was done contrary to the rules of civil procedure okay without proper notice and there is thereby void of operation of the law now just two months later, Stankowski comes back and says that he modifies it and reverses the order, claiming after all documents were filed in the matter. What the hell does that mean? He should have been looking at all the documents. In there the was beginning. an infor- So, so let me explain that. There, w- there was an information filed to the court by Ms. Fleming. Right. And I filed a clarification. I said, wait a minute. Is she filing this as Uncle Johnny's attorney? or on her own behalf, because she hasn't filed a notice of appearance, she's one of the defendants. Yeah. You see my issue? Well, I see your issue, and it I wouldn't make, uh, it would take us a podcast for, or I would have to read the entire thing and then explain some things <laughs> true, to you for you true. to understand. But the probate court, I keep hearing over and over and over again issues with the probate court. And, you know, those of you that have been following us, it's just one thing after another that's corrupt. Uh, even some of the most blatant things that we've been putting out. Now, Mr. Peters. When uh, you say we, you mean the RIP report. I mean the RIP not report. Not Backstory Podcast. No, Please the RIP be report. careful about yeah, that. Yeah, the RIP report. Yes. Uh, make sure me, Francis P. RIP, okay? Uh, but anyway, Mr. Peters, uh, at the very end of all of this, he's he's exhausted, uh, you know, every effort to get this uh, resolved from what I see. My observation, the RIP report, is that there's a whole hell of a lot of attorneys here that got their tit in the ringer, and he's caught everybody. And all he's doing is he is saying, I am being denied due process. I've been 
uh, begging to show cause, he said. The probate and circuit courts have mar- multiple responsibilities to make sure a ward of the state is not abused, and this is an epic failure of the system since 1997. So we'll have to follow this where it goes. But, you know, it begs me. And Harry, let me to, say that I will say this, and I – and I don't have permission from Mr. Peters or anybody else to say this. I'm saying this myself. This is an absolute tragedy. And I can't believe for the life of me that something like this went on here in Baldwin County. I can. Nothing would surprise me anymore. Look at the straw man. Look at the article too. What was it last week when we were talking about the uh, fraud case involving the million dollar swimming pool? It's one damn thing after another. Look at the Mishkeri case and how the uh, judge and uh, attorney for Fairhope manipulated it the way they did. Hey, are you, are you paying attention? <laughs> mm, trying. Okay, well, did you you just said the McSherry case? Right. Who's the judge in the McSherry case? Oh, uh, Stankowski. Who's the judge in this case? Stankowski, and and the attorney for uh, Ronan McSherry uh, has a contract uh, to do criminal defense work for correct. Judge Stankowski in in his courtroom. Right. You know, so used to uh, when there was a criminal docket, you see a bunch of lawyers sitting in the back of the room, and if somebody was indigent, the judge would appoint one of the attorneys to represent them, and the state would pay you for it. Now, each of the circuit judges has three attorneys that work on a contract, and Mr. McSherry's attorney is one of those three people that's in the judge's courtroom continuously. Right. All the time. All the time. And he is also the brother of the famous Boom Boom BP uh, state senator we had right? there, Trip Pittman. Is that his brother? That's his brother. Not his I cousin? I don't know. I thought it was his brother. I don't know. I'm not sure. He acts like that. his brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, we'll see what happens in this case. It's set for trial, uh, for a jury trial. Uh, the the uh, uh, McSherry case is set for a jury trial uh, January 31. I have predicted all along that it would never go to a jury. It would be settled. So well, let me say this. We'll if, just see. If, if, if a U.S. attorney either in Georgia, <laughs> Alabama, or Mississippi cares to look at at this estate, um, I think it is a interstate fraud and racketeering case. Well, And, it, of course, what's the one that we always get everybody on? Wire fraud, Wire mail fraud. fraud, all that Interstate stuff. larceny. I just hope that somebody in the feds or uh, court system or something is reading land yapping can at least do some basic inquiry, but you're right, Harry. Well, they're too busy this suing the city one. of Montgomery over what the streets named. Right, right, and not looking at uh, what's our good <laughs> friend at the ethics commission. I don't know. I'm going to enjoy the. I'm gonna enjoy watching people hit each other all day in that damn football game, though. Yeah. I'm gonna, I might drink some whiskey and – I think I have a shot or two. <laughs> no kidding. Okay, so on to some more interesting demographic news. So, you know, we had a new census, and that's causing us to talk about redistricting and all this. Right. So it turns out Alabama is home to 175,000 people that were born outside of the United States. Me being one. And um, there's a pretty good article with infographics, and you can click on it, and it'll tell you the different – national origins and all that so, i really don't care so those but, hundred and seventy five thousand, it would be accurate to say that uh you're not from here you're not from here like That's in right. belize they say you're no born here <laughs> well there's a bunch of us that weren't born here well <clears throat> right you anyway all right so let's see what else we got lined up here i don't even know what's next well how'd you do Isn't a turkey day did you did you stuff yourself on turkey day not really i got in trouble because i left the door open and one of the dogs made a break for it and it took us about an hour to find it well somebody gave me a two things i ate one was a sweet potato pie which was absolutely killer and the other one was pecan bourbon cheesecake 
which was absolutely to die. You're gonna have to go back to the with VA a, after with a hot shit. cup of coffee, baby. Oof. That was a, that that right there was a meal, probably at two thousand calories. <laughs> so so are we? We're not. We're not going to say who's going to win this game because we all know Alabama's going to win. Do we think say, it's yeah. going to be more than 14 points? I would never bet against Alabama. T-Town graduated there in 1966. All right. 67. So did, did you see this article that came my NBC 15? They, they, they had a little spot, and um, I want to I wanna, uh, watch it real quick. Making America's cars go electric is no longer a story about building the cars. America's electric grid will be challenged by the need to deliver clean power to Everybody those cars. Everybody get a is Abala- is Alabama peak ready? bag. Is your You're about to need it. Ready? NBC 15's ready? James Gordon takes a look at the plans and possibilities. Grid to allow it to handle electric vehicles. The nation will need to invest as much as $125 billion in the grid to allow it to handle electric vehicles. The current infrastructure bill passed by Congress puts about $5 billion towards transmission line construction and upgrades. Uh, uh, Senator Chris Elliott says in Alabama it'll take a collaborative effort between state government and those who supply the power. He has nothing to do with it. An electrical grid and an electrical charging infrastructure necessary to support a wholesale change from internal combustion engines to battery-powered vehicles is going to be something that will take decades to accomplish and all they do is is unhook it and you know and he can su- suck off the government teat until the then so i'll just stick that thing in his kaiser ear with kaiser vacation rentals in orange beach is showing off the latest tourist attraction his company is building you know who runs his campaign vacation right vacation homes with ev John charging Gray. stations uh-huh. we yeah. know this that is, the, this is the who put something like this people up people that are buying ev cars anyway glenn and i were on the they they love their cars united way board together he's a good dude there aren't many of these throughout baldwin county but you will start seeing more and more the ev revolution is coming but the big question is is the infrastructure the big question is is what the hell's that got to do with chris elliott really (laughs) just uh somebody said camera and he ran out of the satellite courthouse Jeez. You know, he's up there in his million-dollar office that everybody paid for that nobody's seen. So Jennifer Wright resigns as Mobile County ADA, and she is running for district judge. There is her new Facebook page. She is a Republican. All right, you ready for your moment of zen? I'm not going to comment on this. I'm just going to let you roll on by with it. Florida couple charged with having oral sex in cop car. That might not be the best location. I love that mugshot. I guess <laughs> that's right. Like to shoot for me. <laughs> so I don't know what to say about this guy. He's not wrong, but nobody's listening to him. Unless uh, let's they're watching just, Fox News. Let's just say since we do have him, we don't need Mo Brooks. <laughs> true, true. So in that in that same spirit, I wanted to leave you guys with a uh, something that, something to think about. All right. By and large, there is some direct connection between the attempt to create a Marxist utopia and starvation, uh, authoritarianism. And I think I know what this is. And actually, it goes back to the question of group selection, which is because these systems are game theoretically unstable, because they punish Mm -hmm. those who do more and reward those who do less, in order to get people who are harmed by that, that is to say, those who tend to contribute more and are therefore punished by such a system, to educate adhere to it, you have to threaten them. Right. right? With They're RS agents. Games, many of them. You have to enforce them by force because people discover they're unplayable. Right. Yeah. Game theorists are interested in the repeatability of interactions. And some forms of interactions degenerate with time. Those aren't sustainable. They're not good games. As you play them, you get bored by them or hurt by them. You don't want to keep playing. Some games maintain themselves. And we have an ethic that teaches us when we're playing a sustainable game. I think that's the voice of conscience. You're main 
Marxism as it's instantiated is actually an unplayable game. And you gave a reason. You can't set up a system that punishes people that are productive and rewards people who aren't. Even if some of the people are only miming productivity and they're actually power hungry tyrants, you can't clump Tax them lands. in with the competent people and punish all of them. Yep. Now, and, it, know, and if you try in order to stabilize it, in order to get those who are being punished for contributing not to defect, you have to threaten them. So the authoritarianism follows quickly on the heels, as does in many cases the failure of the system to deliver even basic well-being, hence yes. starvation. Well, and P Piaget pointed out quite explicitly, because he was very interested in games as the basis of morality, that a game that you have to punish people to adhere to is going to be outcompeted by a game that people will play by themselves. Bingo.